I'm doing this solo, it's a little sketchy. It's finally time to go pick up the motor. I got one stop to make on our way to Chrisfield to TNS. Be down there, pick the motor up, come back here, put the motor back in the boat. We gotta get to it, grab some chains, some straps, and we're headed to Chrisfield. Getting deja vu, we are back. I even brought the guys some t-shirts, Dark Season Eye a lot of really cool stuff here in store and we're gonna drop this shirt again. So hopefully by the time you guys see this video, you can buy this shirt for yourself shipped anywhere with the link in the description. That's got my name on it, but that don't look like my motor. That thing is far nicer than the one I dropped off. There's yours over there. Yeah, right? It's that one there, huh? Some assembly required. And that looks oh, great. Boy does a good job. And there's your old parts, your old alternator and your old Oh, power beautiful. Motor. You guys are so used to dealing cool. with crabbers. You give them back the old parts. Well, well, they put you in the hot seat, don't they? Oh, You're always liable for dropping them. We got new old ones on the transmission, too. Okay, awesome. The ones at the bottom end were a little, little rough looking on, uh -huh. the, on the crabbers. Yeah, they were a little new... blown up down there. Can't believe that's my motor. Hey, they told me they were going to charge me for everybody's day worth of work because you guys drank all that beer at one time, got so drunk, never came in the next day. I got to pay for the pizza. <laughs> I know you've loaded worse motors into worse trucks because I brought you worse motors in worse trucks before. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> There's only been a couple that we've seen came here upside down. Really? Yeah. We're on their side. Looks good to me. Good to you. Can't see it from where I'm driving. You know what I mean? <laughs> as long as yeah. it don't come through the back windshield. Did they tell you about our warranty? Uh, tail light warranty? Yeah. Yeah, I got the same warranty yeah. with the uh -oh. stuff I sell. <laughs> Can't see it from my house. Nope. Shout out to TNS for doing an awesome job. These guys at TNS really are the very best, especially if you're looking at a Caterpillar 3208. They have all the parts. They have all the know-how. They've been doing it for 30 years. Steve and Timmy are great guys. They are the T and the S at TNS. They're the uh, Charlie Daniels of a 3208 Caterpillar. As much as I like you guys and you take care of me, I hope I don't have to see her for a while because that means nothing's wrong with the engine. So I consider myself lucky to call them my friends and to have them so close. One of the other places I like to stop by while I'm in Crisfield is Evans Boats. Evans always has some really cool old work boats up on blocks. Sometimes they're even for sale. So sometimes I like to peruse and see if there's anything that's potentially for sale. Boy, if that don't look like a place you wanna be, I don't know what does. Look at that. Look at all these boats, that's so cool. There's all shape, size, and manner of work boat here. Oh, that one's for sale. Son of a gun. You know I'm gonna check it out. This one hell of a boat. It's a little big for me. And it's got two motors, that's one too many. On a twin engine boat. That is a nice one. Things, that's a very interesting color. This is my candy land here. Whew. That's a giant Canadian hole there. That's a beautiful boat. Oh, dream boat right there. It looks like a Halls Unlimited. What my yard would look like if I won the lottery, I'd just fill it full of crab boats. A lot of pretty boats. A lot of Virginia built boats. A lot of wood boats around here. This boat, the kid, I've seen this boat for sale before. Mm, look at them all. These things are not actual boats, that's a mold. This is how they make boats. They take a mold and then they lay all the fiberglass in it and then they pull everything that's red, all these come apart in pieces, they pull it off and then you're left with a fiberglass boat. There's a lot of history down here. This part of Maryland, I hope is not forgotten. Every one of these boats has a good story. Where it came from, who built it. None of these crab boats got built for fun. Every work boat ever got built. To put food on somebody's table. The motor is a little wobbly back there on the way home. <laughs> yeah, I think wobbling? It's a little sketchy. I would not want to have to pick that up on its side. That thing weighs as much as a car. With the gear on it, it's like 1,600 pounds. I don't want that tipping over. Oh, I'm pushing my luck. I gotta stop. Made it back home, and Lord willing, this is the last time this motor for this boat will ever be in the bed of my truck. I'm hoping to be crabbing out of a different boat with a different motor before I have to pull this one back out again. If you own one of these diesel motors or you work in or with equipment or anything like that, you know that these things are not cheap to maintain, to own, to put fuel in, anything. What did TNS do to this engine besides give it a beautiful paint job? We have all new hoses, these big oil lines, they go bad, the ends start to blow up and then they start to get stiff and uh, come apart here. So th this is a common 3208 issue. These hoses alone are a couple hundred bucks a piece. All the band clamps and all the little rubber hoses are new. Trans cooler lines are also new. Obviously we've got a paint job on the entire thing. It's been degreased, pressure washed and painted. Uh, we got two fresh filters and an oil change, a new Raycor fuel filter. We have a new air filter 
There's a new turbo gasket in here. We have a few new bolts for the turbo, new belts on the front of the motor, a new water pump impeller. There's a new thermostat in there. Again, all the linking, these little hoses and everything are all brand new and all the band clamps. Uh, the heat exchanger has been cleaned. After cooler has been cleaned. There's all new zinc anodes all around in the whole motor. I even got that painted Caterpillar yellow belt that was special ordered. A new alternator as well with the painted pulleys and all because it just helps with traction, you know? This is a different alternator than I had. It's very similar, but this one excites at a lower RPM, which is what I'm looking for. Better pulley size because I was burning up belts because I had the wrong size pulley on here. Now, all the little fuel return lines are all new. Coolant flush, just regular maintenance for the most part. All things that if left undone would become very expensive problems. Luckily, I got away with relatively inexpensive maintenance instead of very expensive problems. 3,100 bucks. I'm gonna take a moment and do something that is completely out of character. I'm gonna clean the engine bay just because it's a real pain to do once the motor's back in it. I'm not big on cleaning. I believe that the oil in the build is keeping things from getting rustier than they are. We're gonna put some rust reformer on the engine bedding here so that it won't rust anymore. This is a contained bilge. A lot of work boats have this because we run old engines and they tend to leak. Anything in here, soap, water, oil, anything does not get pumped overboard. So it allows us to catch all the oil and everything before it goes into the bilge pump, gets pumped overboard. So we do that with rags and mats, vacuum if we have to. Don't worry, we're not gonna cause any environmental disaster. Don't be calling the EPA or- Oh, we don't Shrimp have any. heads. That is a hell. You got spiked by a shrimp head. That's how you get infections. There's a shrimp head. That's what I use for bait. That's been pickled with engine oil. That's delicious. Maybe I should eat it. Maybe you should see if it can it catch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you see a boat with a really clean build, it means whoever owns the boat doesn't use it enough. You know what's interesting? Sponge works better for bailing like this after you've gotten it completely soaked. The first time is slow and ineffective. Second time, it really does it well. I find the same with the crew. Sometimes they can be slow and ineffective, but after you hose them down, they tend to be a little faster on their feet. <laughs> No bilge crabs, though. It's yeah. a surprise. There's always a battery box crab. You can count on catching a crab with a battery box. Honestly, everything in this boat is in remarkably pretty good shape, I'd say. It is. Okay. I mean, the bedding, like the, the stringers, looks, everything is like there's not, not bad at it's all. It's not scaly at all. Hell no. Mostly because it's pickled. This is dumb. I need a power washer. I can't get the wipers to shut off for some reason. I'm honestly just surprised they work. This truck is awesome. It makes me want to smoke cigarettes and buy a 67 Chevelle and put it in my garage and never work on it. Like that era, you know what I mean? Like person. Everybody's got a dad that drove one of these at one time. Very classic. I'm gonna try to go up with it. Ooh, they picked up. I'm doing this solo, so it's a little sketchy. Anybody for a tagline today? We are just going to hope I don't hit anything. Oh wow! Oh stop, 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 stop! All right, we are going to swing right, maybe. require supervision. This is precarious. It's hanging very high right now. Gotta go forward. The fronts look like they're lined up. I gotta put these shins on there. Here. Here we go. Now we have to align the motor, so we've got to pull the coupler, the transmission together, and then use feeler gauges and spin it around to make sure the motor is aligned with the prop shaft so it doesn't uh, explode and tear itself to a thousand pieces and then we'll have the engine back out again. Done that before. I think I'm drawing it in. Something's moving. It looks to me like we have to go up on the front. Uh, I was thinking the same thing, but... 
can't really go too much up. Yeah, might have to get more shims. But why would it be different than it was when we pulled it out? Our stuff's all aligned, but as you can hear, we have a new problem. And if you listen, uh, you can hear the boat sinking. Which really isn't like the end of the world, it's just kind of standard procedure boat sinking. The shaft packing is leaking. Easy fix. Actually, it's not. In theory, it's an easy fix, but it's uh, it's actually tricky to get to in this boat because it's, it's got to reach down through this itty bitty little hatch. All right, so the boat is not leaking, but I'm realizing all the same things that I realize every single time I do this exact same job. I think, oh wow, it would be so much easier if I just had like a socket or ratchet. Then I went and got it and realized it doesn't fit down in there, which I remember realizing every time I've ever done this. We're living life a quarter turn at a time now, and luckily. These bolts are incredibly fine thread, which means you have to spin them 87,000 times a piece to get the nuts to. We're about at turn seven. We'll see you in a little while. I may have a beard by then. I can't even grow a beard. I've been trying my entire life. Nigh on 27 years I've been working on that beard. And when I do grow facial hair, I just look weird. I just look like a wise old Asian man with like lots of very thin hairs on my face. It's doesn't play. My favorite is when I don't unhook the battery and I have to work on these. Bring the wrench up and then touch the hot terminal and then it sparks and welds the wrench to the starter. I'm actually concerned now because this motor looks really nice. Can't have anything this shiny or nice. It's bound to break. The hard learner, I think we touched on that last time. See, a lot of you folks were giving me grief online in the comments about pulling my motor out and taking it somewhere. I do all my own work on the engine, but I do not regret my decision. A little bit of money that I spent now is gonna save me from not only losing the downtime when this motor were, were to inevitably break, it's also just kind of solving all the little issues that could lead into bigger issues. There is no assistance for fishermen, just independent out here and we're a dying breed. There's uh, not many of us left. Even where I'm at, there's not really even any other fishermen. Like on the shore, usually, You'll see like 18 guys all gathered around the boat. Some are just drinking beer, some are offering advice, some are actually helping. But uh, here, it's just your boy most of the time. I know it did cost me some cash out of pocket to take this thing out now, but I think that it was a good move long term. And also still like to sell this boat and get into another one. If I do that, I really want this motor to be right for the next guy. Last thing I need is crab guy from TikTok, you know selling somebody a bum engine. The way my life goes, this thing could blow up in 10 years and I would still get blamed for it. If you have a work boat you wanna sell, let me know. If you wanna buy the Weibo, it's for sale. It's very important to drop tools in the bilge during this step because next time you need to do this job, you're gonna have all the tools that you need that are already gonna be in the bilge. And they're not even gonna be rusty. They're gonna be all lubed up. Make sure you drop some spare hardware down there as well. Since in all of my infinite wisdom, when I made the wiring harness, I used pretty much all the same exact color wire. I just labeled them with numbers because you don't even need to know what they do if you just have a number. Weirdly enough, seems like there's more wires here than there is there, which I don't remember that being a problem before. This stuff here is your friend when you are a commercial fisherman. This is grease tape. I put it around all of my Hydraulic fittings keeps them from like scaling up and blowing up. We are so close to getting this motor running. I can already see the ice caps melting. I pretty much got this thing in and hooked up. I was actually in Arkansas doing some hunting with my friends from Meat Eater, Clay Newcomb and Brent Reeves. So we're back now. Need to splice a new piece of fuel line onto here. This is just a return line. Uh, so I'm just gonna put a barb fitting and, and extend the line into the return. Need some band clamps, need a band clamp on the other side, put some coolant in it, and I might even put the stack on to start it up. You know what's something I've always wondered? Why don't they make stainless steel tools? Are they just too expensive? Every set of cutters I have, obviously, you know, we're out here in a caustic environment, they get rusty and then they're like impossible to use. So I'm just curious, like, is that a thing? Barb fitting, people are probably losing it watching me do this, but. I don't care. It's a return line. Doesn't need to be airtight or anything. Just needs to be not dumping into the bilge. I can't stand that either, but just for the sake of running it, we're gonna try it. I wanna cut it too short because I know how it works. We'll cut it too short and then I wanna have to run it somewhere else. Leave it long for now. Don't crucify me in the comments yet. This is our next task. It appears as though I've made this mistake before because like all the other band clamps on here are way too big. They're like all this size cranked way down. Must be a common Luke issue. That's gonna be impossible to get off next time. Oddly enough, tractor supply, band clamps, very expensive. Ace hardware, band clamps, not that bad. But everything else, very expensive. Band clamp on, band clamps that are too big. Water 
on. This is our exhaust here. Glad I got a new turbo gasket. I needed one of those. I thought that these bolts were stripped, but they weren't. I guess I didn't have the right size or they didn't, they weren't long enough. So I was pulling threads out or something like that. These are the bolts I've been using for my turbo. These are the ones that should be in there for my stack, not the turbo. That's a big spinny boy there, son. Something that I think is great that makes work boats really interesting to me. And we're so used to manufactured parts for the actual job that like we kind of get jaded, but these tabs to hold the turbo in, they're just pieces of metal that are bent with a bead of weld run across them. And then the pressure of those just hold the stack flange onto the turbo. These boats are built by people that see problems, create solutions. It's what watermen are good at. And I'm not the only one. Every waterman works as hard as I do. It'd be nice to be able to sh highlight those guys at some point. This is a job that's very easy to do with two people. It's more than twice as hard to do with one person. I work on low odds. It's kind of my thing. <gasps> oh gosh. I don't want people to get, ever get the impression that I'm the hardest working waterman out there. It's just a hard industry. Every commercial fisherman I know is a hard worker. You don't have an option. It's not enough to just be a hard worker these days. You have to be a jack of all trades, basically, solving problems on the fly. Oh my gosh. Have to be cost effective and advance your business and about a hundred other things. Watermen may not be the most educated people out there, but they are some of the smartest people I know. Have more toes than teeth and no high school diploma. A lot of them are some of the kindest folks you'll ever meet as well. Next time you go to buy seafood, make sure you're buying local because guys like us depend on it. I should have done all this stupid stuff. Oh no. So much for homemade manufactured parts. Okay, stay. Prime example, problem, solution. It's not like you need the stack on to just start the boat, but I'd rather not blow soot all over my nice clean boat. Clean. I knew mechanics can uh, relate to this because a real pain. Ooh. Do I have the wrong tab? Oh no. Oh, it just doesn't even fit. Screw it. I'll get that one when I button it up. I'm just rushing this because I'm on a deadline. Oversee another project here in just a minute. The moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna see if she starts. Are you kidding me? The battery's gonna be dead. Take two. She is purring like a kitten. Had to tighten a couple of these clamps, but other than that, she's all good. Pretty stuff right there. Officially got the motor out, service put back in, and actually all the gauges even appear to be working as well, which is fantastic. That was a success. All that work and still got the whole deck covered in soot. Burning dinosaurs now, baby. We got dinosaurs going in and noise coming out. That's what we like to see.